So, as many of y'all know, and for those who are unaware, I recently picked up an Xbox One X. Originally, this was going to be some kind of a first impressions video. After a few days of use, I get on here and give y'all my thoughts. The good, the bad, the ugly, you know, the vibes. But I noticed something. As I was gaming on the Xbox, I noticed how often I would gravitate towards playing it as my primary platform. Even though I had a PlayStation 4, a Nintendo Switch, and this badass new gaming PC, I found myself gaming a lot more on Xbox than I thought I ever would. I wanted to see, though, if those were genuine feelings, or it was just simply a case of, ooh, shiny new product type which we've all succumbed to at one point or another. So during this quarantine for 21 days straight, I imposed the challenge upon myself. If there was a game that I wanted to play, and it was available on Xbox, I'd be getting it on Xbox. And here we are, 21 days since that challenge. We're getting close to 30 days, in fact. And I've got some impressions for y'all. So first things first, we might as well address the elephant in the room, since I know it's what y'all are wondering, it's what you're typing right now. Boy, have you lost your goddamn mind. First things first. How in the world is this man who has done videos saying that the Xbox brand is irrelevant? How dare he, the audacity of this bitch, to come on here and buy an Xbox? Especially on the cusp of a new generation. You better have some good reason, Neo. You better have some good reason. And to answer that nail-biting question, y'all... I don't. Hey, if I'm keeping 100% honest, y'all, I, I really don't. I'm going to tell you exactly how all this shit went down. So, it happened on Twitter, as all bad things do. You know, it was a Friday morning, and one of the pages that I follow tweets out video game-related deals. And I saw that they posted Xbox One X was on sale for $299. And y'all know how it is. There's always that product that you see out of the corner of your eye that looks really good, but you know you shouldn't buy it. You know, it's like, oh, that looks a, like a great deal. $299 for a 4K cable machine. Well, you know, I don't have a 4K Blu-ray player yet, so maybe, no, nah, I don't need this, man. If I wanted to get Xbox, I'd just wait for the Series X. Or, you know, I might as well just build a PC because all the games are going there anyway. I oh, mean, we don't need no Xbox One. And yet, somehow, I ended up on the website, and I learned about this program called Xbox All Access, which I'm not going to get into all the specifics, but for those who are wondering, it's essentially like, let's say you go to your phone carrier, let's take T-Mobile, and you have the option of entering into a contract where you get the device for $0 down, and then you just pay it off monthly. That's essentially what it is with Xbox, except you get two years of Game Pass Ultimate and the ability to upgrade to the Series X. Pretty freaking dope. And that is why we are here. So, it's been a really long time since I've gamed on Xbox. I don't know if I've told you all this, but the last time I gamed heavily on Xbox was oof, back during the Halo 4 days. So, that's like, what, 2012, 2013? We're going on over seven years at this point. Almost a decade. And I've noticed a lot of things as I was gaming on this device. So... The, the the structure of this video is going to be comparing my experiences playing the One X versus the platform I used to play the most, which was uh, PlayStation 4 Pro, as y'all can see right there. L let me just talk about some of the things I noticed immediately off the rip. This system, not only is it smaller than the PS4 Pro, but it is a hundred times quieter by comparison. Like, I, I don't know if it's just me, but every single time I turn on my PS4 and I try to run a game, it's basically straight up like... <laughs> Oh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the captain speaking. Thank you for boarding flight 227. We are about to uh, take off into space because this motherfucker sounds like a jet engine. It didn't matter if I was playing God of War or Final Fantasy VII Remake. This shit was loud for no reason. I already know what y'all about to say. Ooh, you got to regularly clean out your fans. You got to clean out the hint sink. Man, 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 man. You've had it for too many years. This, this, this thing right here, I've, I've had it for too many years. This is the Spider-Man PS4 Pro Limited Edition. I've only owned this thing for a year and a half. Year and a half. And I've cleaned it out repeatedly. Yet, it still makes all those sounds. This is my second PS4, by the way. The Xbox One X, it doesn't matter if I am playing a graphically intensive game, if I'm doing some type of streaming on Twitch, or if I'm running a game off of, like, the hard drive. This thing is whisper quiet. And even if it gets loud, let's say running a game at, like, 4K, 30 frames... It's still 
very quiet and it just it puts everything into perspective honestly it really does and you just go there and you're just like damn bitch you used to live like this hey man that's just how it is man you got to give credit where credit is due shout out to the microsoft design team because they somehow crammed all that power and all those fans and the cooling into a really small device and it doesn't overheat that's just amazing props to them now going into the actual uh operating system this is where i have a couple of major points of contention because i don't know about y'all I- i'm just not a fan of it whatsoever so you know how on the playstation when you boot up the device you're greeted to your games you scroll up you see things like trophy list friends um settings and then if you scroll down you get to the uh <coughs> excuse me you get to the uh, community tabs for each of the individual games nintendo switch similar approach turn it on you're greeted to your games top left is your friends list all these buttons in the bottom go for like setting screenshots very simple and intuitive xbox it's like you gotta do 30 backflips to find anything you boot it up and there's just all these weird pins scrolling around and you're trying to find one particular setting here and then you have to do a couple of button prompts to get that there it's just what is going on but apparently this has been a problem that's been going on for years with the xbox ui especially if you're someone who's gamed on it for a long time i saw someone do like a time lapse of how it was when it originally launched to now oh my god it used to be so clunky so ugly it's based off of windows architecture you know so it started off as like windows 8 ish with the tiles and then gravitated towards windows 10 and it's it's gotten a lot better there's more customization attached to it but sometimes the ease of access of the other systems the reason why it works is because it's so easy to use here it's just like it's usable but there's just too much stuff going on and then they have advertisements on some of the pages i'm just like why if you want advertisements do them on the store or do them on like a particular other page not when i'm loading up my console and i see my games and everything i pay for the service to not have ads but if you can get past that and you can start customizing it to the way you like with the pins uh it does become bearable but it's just it still feels clunky by comparison to other systems whether it's playstation nintendo or even on um windows 10 microsoft's primary platform it's still not as good but they're getting there they're getting there with all their constant updates and uh dashboard changes in terms of other things though they're there are some weird design philosophies that they do that really I don't understand why. For example, um, to do certain things such as like doing screenshot capturing or recording videos, there are a couple of button prompts. So whereas on PlayStation or Nintendo, it's just one button, you're good to go, or one long press, you're good to go, or a double tap. Here, you got to press the home button, and then Y, and then X. And then you got to press the home button again. It might not sound like a big deal, but when you're gaming, and let's just say you you think nothing of it, you want to capture a screenshot. Ooh, that looks pretty. Boop. That's it. You're still in the action. No other menus. With Xbox, it's like, boop, 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 boop. There's a couple more prompts, and it just kind of takes you out of the experience. And, you know, sometimes you can't really pause your game like that, which it does when you press the Xbox button. And it's just like... Ugh, it's not as smooth and intricate. Again, it's a minor grievance, but that minor grievance kind of dictates everything around the um, layout and the interface with the ecosystem. It's just like, ugh, that's the exact feeling you get. Ugh. But moving away from that, even though it is kind of clunky, the speed at which the operating system runs is just blazingly fast. Like certain things like loading up the store, uh, friends list, like all of those things very very quick and intuitive and there's just not much time wasted waiting for such and such to load you know a very stark contrast to the ps4 you know how when you open up the store you got to load certain things and those take a while with xbox it's just boom ready to go that's it what's up you want to buy this boom 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 download it awesome you want to check download progress boom 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 awesome you don't even gotta leave anything it's dope and i really do enjoy it for that the speed of a console is something that is a a highlight for me especially as you know nowadays you want everything to be quick and intuitive to your particular play style now i don't know if that's just in general with a lot of the xbox uh, consoles now or it's something just exclusive to the x by comparison to the s or the uh, original uh, 2013 model i can't say but from using the actual device as a console itself i'm gonna say something really bold and controversial y'all can timestamp this you know put this on twitter 
Xbox One X is the best gaming console I've used this generation. From the speed to the performance to just the small things such as, you know, downloading games really fast. Like, for example, sometimes I don't always hardwire my consoles. You know, sometimes I like to have them as Wi-Fi because, you know, I don't do any competitive gaming like that. And I have really good internet, so it's not like I get crazy drops going from, like, Wi-Fi to wired. Sometimes I'll just have my Xbox wireless and it still gets really, really good speeds. Really good to the close to the point of what I'm paying for. And by comparison to my PlayStation, it doesn't even get close to my Xbox numbers at all. And that's just a problem with a lot of PlayStation products like the Vita and, and then the PS3, the Wi-Fi cards in those systems is very anemic by comparison. So it's like on Xbox, even if I'm on the other side of the house where the router isn't located, I'm still able to get like 80 down, 100 down, and the games download that quick. PlayStation, 5 down, 10 down, maybe 15 down. Both on Wi-Fi, which is not the preferred way to download. But I've been able to stream at 1080p 60 frames per second on Wi-Fi on the other side of the house. And shit just works fine. So kudos to Microsoft on that front, right? Moving into some other things that, you know, Microsoft is really doing, but they're not, um, it's like, it's not like they're really advertising. It's always something you appreciate, but not something that you're going to run out there and say, yes, they need to have this. Xbox one has this feature called windows 10 streaming where you can stream your whole console to your PC. So let's say for example, you're playing a 360 backwards compatible title you can stream that to your computer and control your Xbox from your computer and stream those games to your preferred platform, whether it's YouTube or Twitch or or, or Mix or whatever. That's just crazy. So you you don't have to stop the show to have a capture card to do anything. If you have really good internet, you can get it done. And then there's a bunch of other weird features that you don't really appreciate until you have it. Like let's say, for example, you have multiple people in your household and you have multiple controllers. You can assign particular profiles to those controllers. And so that way when someone signs in, it knows automatically, oh, um, Raquel wants to play, or oh, Tyrone just signed on, or you know, whoever is in your house, that type of thing, it'll sync to your controllers. And then the customization with the controllers is also insane. You can go and create particular profiles and presets, let's just say for certain games you play where you wanna have um, more sensitivity with your triggers or adjusting the dead zones and remapping buttons for certain games. Like, it's just insane how much behind the scenes work they've been doing that now when we see people like Nintendo come out with button mapping, we go crazy when Xbox has been doing this shit for the longest and creating profiles and you can easily switch between them. It's just like, whoa, dude. And speaking of the controller, since we're on this topic, um, y'all know the Xbox 360 is still one of my favorite controllers of all time. I actually rank it over all of the PlayStation controllers that have ever come out. It's just so comfortable. Playing this, I was excited to see if there's any type of similarities. And thankfully, the similarities are there. There are some differences, of course, uh, in terms of the overall feel and the aesthetic. But I actually like it. Uh, a lot more than the 360 controller. I know it's a little sacrilegious. Uh, the triggers, for example, they feel a lot better. They don't have that weird squeaky thing that the other um, Xbox controllers, ha- the Xbox 360 controller had. And just everything feels great. Like it's got a much better D pad by comparison. Uh, bumpers feel about the same. Everything about this is awesome. Like ease of use, access, syncing, everything is just fantastic. Now, it does still run on AA batteries, which I know we all like to joke about. But if I'm being honest with y'all, I've been using AA since I've got the system. I'm on my second pair right now, and that's with close to, oh my god, like 100 hours of gameplay. Like, this system, with when it comes to AA batteries, it actually utilizes it to its fullest capability. So I'd be getting like 30 plus hours on a pair of AA's. That's crazy. And if I got a rechargeable battery, I know I'd still be getting good hours too. But, you know, I think I might be rocking with double A's for a while. I know I could go out there and buy a rechargeable one, but I just like not having to oh sit the controller down to charge it or having a backup controller just in case and, and all the other things. I like just double A's. And I also bought a big ass industrial size package of batteries from Costco. So literally, I don't have to worry about batteries for this thing for well over a year. And I get over 30 hours on each charge. I'm good with that. Again, comparing it to the PlayStation 4, where the, the controllers were like, Eight hours if you're lucky, realistically five hours, and as the years go on, y'all know what happens. But yeah, 
I'm a really big fan of this controller. I'm a fan of all the um, accessibility features as far as customization is concerned. A lot of the things that Microsoft is doing to try to cater to the consumer, such as being able to uh, gift your friends games. You know, that's something that we've always wanted on consoles for the longest time. It's been available on Steam for years and Xbox has it there. So if I wanted to surprise my friend with a game or let's say, hey, there's this co-op title. I think it'd be really cool if we play it together. You can do stuff like that. Speaking of other things that, again, you kind of take for granted at something that's really cool, uh, backwards compatibility. I know everybody pimps it out like it's this game-changing feature, which, you know, it kind of isn't. Uh, but it's just dope to play games like, like let's just say, some of the Rare Replay titles, like Banjo-Kazooie, because I was streaming that. The game looks absolutely incredible. Incredible. And I'm playing it on a 55-inch 4K TV. It looks insane. Insane, insane, insane. And it just... It makes me think like, oh my gosh, what other Xbox 360 games have they got in here that I want to try out? So, you know, I tested out Red Dead Redemption. I tested out The Witcher 2. They look beautiful. Like, it just, <laughs> it's not a game-changing feature, but it's such, a, it's, a, it's such a great feature. And the fact that Microsoft goes back and they enhance a lot of those games, it's just like a long-term thing that you really do appreciate the more times you own an Xbox product. So if you own the Xbox One, and let's just say you skip the Series X, and let's say you pick up the other system, just the fact that a lot of those other backwards com uh, compatible games are still gonna be supported, and they might even get new upgrades to them, it's just absolutely dope, man. Now for logistics reasons, we know the reason why they're not um, continuing to do a lot of the backwards compatibility with like original Xbox and Xbox 360, you know, it's very much so a licensing nightmare. But for what they've done, I really have to um, applaud Microsoft for that. You know, I'm not going to go back and play every Xbox 360 backwards compatible, but it's great that I do have the option for a lot of these games that have not released um, HD remasters. So that's uh, something good that I give them credit on. And uh, yeah, Xbox Game Pass, which is the, the major highlight of it, you know, which is the Netflix style of games. It is as good as people say it is. Just being able to download all those games, no questions asked, play it with all your friends. It's dope, man. I love it. You can sync it with your phone and you can download it directly from there. So, like, let's just say you're not in your house and it, it'll just download for you and it'll be there. You know, similar to what PlayStation and uh, Nintendo have on their apps. But it's just so awesome because you can browse the app to see a lot of new games and some of the things that you were looking about playing. So, it's just, again... Features that you don't really think are game changers, but it's nice that they have them there because it improves the quality of life. And other than that, man, you know, Xbox One X, I'm very pleasantly surprised with it as a product. Uh, had I picked it up a, a couple of years back, I think it would be my primary way of playing games. You know, of course, with some exceptions such as exclusive titles and also um, certain multi-platform games that I want to play with friends. Because let's just be honest, the amount of people I know who have PlayStations as opposed to Xbox, like, let's just be real about life for a second. Uh, it's it's still an amazing device to play those games. So if, if I didn't have my PC or a PlayStation... I'd be content with owning an Xbox One X if all I cared about was uh, third-party multiplats and not exclusives. But that being said, exclusive-wise, the system, it's not great at all. You know, I was playing a lot of the games on there. And while they do have a couple of good titles for the generation, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say they don't have great games. As a whole, it's missing that X Factor. It's missing that God of War. It's missing that Horizon. It's missing the Spider-Man. It's missing Breath of the Wild. It's missing, you know, Super Mario Odyssey. Those kind of games that get people to buy the console. They have some good games on there. But it's just more of the same. Prettier versions of Xbox 360 titles. You know, Gears of War 5. It's a decent game. But it's not different at all than what you played on Gears of War 2 and 3 on 360 which was a decade ago you know halo is still halo forza is still forza again they're still good games but it's not like they're breaking new ground to attract new people into the ecosystem and i guess that's part of the reason why they're putting all their games on game pass because part of the reason why they're doing so much goodwill and they're trying to um, foster all these people into the uh, ecosystem is because they did screw up a lot in the beginning and they're doing all these things, number one, to make up for it, make amends. And also, it's just because they are in last place and people aren't buying the system. Like, let's let's just be real about life for a second. 
if I was looking at games that I would like to play long term, like I know I'm going to say like, yeah, you know, years down the road, this was a great game. The only two I can think of are Ori and the Blind Forest and, you know, Ori Will the Wisps as well and Cuphead. Both of those games are on Nintendo Switch and I wouldn't be surprised if Will the Wisps end up on Nintendo Switch too. So will their whole initiative of Xbox Play Anywhere on any device work out? It remains to be seen, but as a whole, y'all, uh, Xbox One X, I've got some positive things to say. If you are a person who wants to play third-party multi-platform games, this is the best console to play it on. Games run quick. They look beautiful. Just the amount of um, customization, accessibility options for the Xbox, it just it stomps all over PlayStation 4, and I, I don't have any problems saying that. But at the end of the day, if you want to play great exclusive titles and you don't necessarily care about all the things xbox offers you're going to be fine with a playstation 4 for an entire generation more of your friends are probably going to own a playstation 4 and that's it that's basically it y'all there's there's nothing else to say like that's basically what it is xbox amazing product no games playstation amazing product with games so yeah that's basically the gist of it, y'all. For media for now, my name is NGS signing out. Like always, I will catch you guys later. Peace.